won't say it. Well, I mean, it is different because, like you said, biologically, men and women are different. I do do acknowledge that. Okay, we're on the same page. Yeah, but at the same time, again, that's just a really thick ball of yarn that needs to be untangled and worked through. But listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. Sublime. I think when it comes to sports, that's just something that they have to consider now. Because I think more people are comfortable with being who they are. And so regardless of if they were born a man, if they feel like they are a woman and they want to transition, they are a woman now. And so I don't know, maybe it just is, it's going to take some, like a lot of things that are changing and a lot of ideas that are shifting. It might just take some adjusting. I don't know. Like, I don't know how that would work. But I think the it's, it's more complicated than is it fair? Because it's just like, uh. No, I agree. But I think the problem is if, um, for instance, if Joanna, have you ever watched Joanna Man? A long time ago. Okay, so Joanna Man was a guy who was pretending to be a woman because he got kicked out of the NBA. So he went to the WNBA. Okay. So if a Joanna Man happened, mm-hmm. he would be the highest played WNBA player. And that would take money, potential endorsement deals away from the Candace mm-hmm. Parkers and the um, let's see the other girls and Brittany Griners and things like that. Is that fair? Mm, again, I'm not in the sports world. No, so just I'm hypothetically. Just using that that's, as an example. That's like, I don't think there's a... Because sports is about performance. You get paid based on your performance. I don't, I don't think you can say if it's fair. I just think it's going to take some adjusting. Like the people who, nobody makes the game, but the people who control, you know, what what's going on like the higher ups like there needs to be some adjustments and i don't know figure out how that quite works and how it quite fits in um but i don't think it's fair to not let those people play what would be their so your first point you said the higher ups should make adjustment what would be their incentive to make adjustments yeah mm. Like you said, what was it? You said the UFC fighter was breaking people's skulls. People are dying or getting seriously hurt. I would think there would be some kind of... No, know. but you're saying the adjustment should be more inclusive, not exclusive. Yeah, just trying to figure out how we quite navigate this. And honestly, I don't know how they quite navigate it. Like, I don't know. I don't know, because I don't think it's fair to not include those people. Like, I feel like they should be included and they should. Even if the consequence is women's skulls being broken. But I don't think it's fair just because, you know, you have felt your whole life that you are a woman, but you also love this sport and you want to play this sport. But you're kind of, you know, a little a little more advanced as far as the physical aspect goes. It's not a little. A little bit, I'm gonna say a little bit. (laughs) And so (laughs) you can't just say like, oh, that person can't play. Like, nah, that's why I said that. I I don't know what adjustments. I mean, if there was a trans league, Mm -hmm. I'd be with you. But the idea of more- But then it's not inclusive, right? You're kind of putting them over there by themselves. Yeah. Because if they keep fighting y'all, they're gonna keep breaking your skulls. So, so we we have two we have two options. We have two options. We either have inclusion or more women's skulls broken. What's what's the pick? Not necessarily. What's the third option? <laughs> I really don't know. And again, this is just a metaphor. Even the the sports thing is just a metaphor for the larger conversation. I don't know. But I do think they should be allowed to play. So I don't know how that's going to work and how that's going to fit and how everybody can just coexist and do their thing. Um, so your daughter is a wrestler. Mm-hmm. And you find out that next week she has to wrestle the state champion mm-hmm. who was born a boy. Mm-hmm. As a parent, 
You okay with that? I hopefully have confidence in my daughter's abilities, what she's doing. And I mean, there's probably gonna be a conversation about it. Um, but yeah, go out there and do your thing. Would you not let your daughter wrestle? Would you tell her, you would tell her she couldn't do it? Fuck no. You, you would tell her she couldn't do it? Absolutely. What the world? I, I box. Okay. I've been punched by a very, very skilled woman. I've been punched by a not so skilled man. Mm, okay. Not the same? Mm. It's not the same. Mm. Okay. It's not the same. Now, if that state champion is, you know, just a girl who's a little bit more mus um, muscular than the average bear, that's different, right? Like uh, Serena Williams or something like that. But if, if that girl, because the thing that we downplay is the bone structure density is different. It is fundamentally different. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't subject my daughter to that, to that danger. Okay. But you would. First of all, I don't have any kids. So my imaginary kids aren't being subjected to anything. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I think it's again that, I don't know. I don't know. That's tough. That's, yeah, that's a tough. I think it's simple. I think it's a slam dunk. I don't think it's simple. I don't think it's right to just say you can't play sports because you decide that you want to be who you are on the inside and you want to fully express yourself. Oh, you can't play sports. No, but I, I think it, it's and I think it's not that we're trying to just exclude people for the sake of exclusion. I think if you have a certain number of DUIs, you should be able to drive. I think it should make sense, right? I think exclusion for the sake of the greater good, the greater safety, um, and in that realm, specifically in the sports realm, because men aren't worried about a girl who transitioned to a boy stepping on the football field. <laughs> Come on. Or the basketball court. You know what I'm saying? We're not worried about that because we understand uh, it's still in our favor. Um, but with our daughters... That, that is a danger. And, and not even just the physical uh, ramifications, but also, like I said, that 300 pound man who decides he identifies as a woman comes in and breaks all the female world records. And I've been, I was the, I was the, I'm a girl. I was a world record holder. I trained my entire life. I sacrificed blood, sweat, and tears. And this guy, because he suffers from gender dysmorphia, trained for two weeks, came in and killed me. Is that fair to women? I don't think it's dysmorphia. I think it's just wanting to be who you are. And again, this limited amount of time that we are given, I think you need to just do your thing, be happy in whatever realm that is. But as far as like sports goes, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to solve that, that's, navigate that. I think we need to live you know, the best possible life we can mm -hmm. and be happy but not at the consequence of other people. Well, how is it a consequence of, to other people? Like the example I gave, the, that woman who just worked her ass off is now obsolete. But that is something that I feel like, again, adjustments that I don't know. That's not my, my realm. I don't know. But I think that's something that can be altered, fixed, worked out. Other than that, is there any more consequences? Well, I think the consequences build on each other. I think, you know, whether it's the physical consequence of that girl potentially being hurt mm -hmm. or the emotional consequence of, damn, I trained all my life and somebody with an unfair biological advantage came in and shattered everything I've worked for. That's the end. Those can, you know, lead to what if that former world record holder is now an alcoholic? Mm -hmm. Because they're like, life is messed up. Like, what was the point of me doing all that work? So I think we have to have more foresight than just let but, this person live their best life. But I'm not going to say accountability because the things that we do go through do affect us. And trauma or whatever does affect us. But I don't think we can solely blame 
her theoretical person having an alcohol problem. Oh, it's his fault. Like, that's the reason why she can. So, I mean, as far as like that goes, she's an adult that made those decisions and she's not trying to actively help herself and she's not taking steps. So I don't know if we can just say like, oh, this is going to lead to these people going down the wrong roads. At the end of the day, we all have choices to make. I agree. However, mm-hmm. I think uh, like I'm a psychology nerd, so I'm, I'm all about cause and effect. Mm-hmm. And the reality of psychology is that um, a lot of the things we do, a lot of the ways we think about the world, a lot of our vices, a lot of our problems are a consequence of something that happened to us when we couldn't defend ourselves, yeah. whether physically or emotionally, mm-hmm. right? So I try to think past just let them figure it out. I try to empathize a little bit. Yeah. So for that girl who worked her ass off to be really, really good at this thing, the best female in the world or in her county or in school, whatever the case may be, to be upstaged by somebody with a biological advantage, I empathize with that. Mm -hmm. And I empathize with some of the potential consequences. I'm not saying that she should blame the transgender person. I'm saying that we as a society have a responsibility to make sure those things don't happen. That's the same reason why if if, um, somebody is found using steroids, they are just, you know what I'm saying? Disqualified from whatever they were participating in. Mm-hmm. And a man coming into a female sport is pretty much the equivalent of that. You have an unfair advantage. And you've, you've acknowledged that, right? Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't want to say, it. well, I mean, it is different because, like you said, biologically, men and women are different. I do, do acknowledge that. Okay, we're on so, the same page. Yeah, but at the same time, again, that's just a really thick ball of yarn that needs to be untangled and worked through. But I don't know. I I don't think it's fair to just exclude those people. Okay, so we don't have to unravel it because I don't I don't know how much time you have. But what do you think would be the first step to approaching that unraveling? Maybe talking to the people who are transgender in those sports. Maybe talking to them. Maybe even seeing if they want to be in a league of their own. Because, I mean, you know, that's, that's solely de- um, affecting them. Maybe having a conversation with them. Should we talk to the women? Talk to, uh, talk to everybody. Okay. Maybe so, is is there a dialogue going on, or is it just something that's happening? Are people talking? There is no dialogue because you can't talk about it. It's like you know, because we we're we're in a very inclusive mm-hmm. zeitgeist right now, so you you can't. Talk. So is there controversy over transgender people competing in women's sports? Yeah, yeah, For but all. nobody's talking about it. Yes, because you say anything about the the LGBTQ. You're going to lose your job. Nobody's talking about it. But people are lashing out and they're mad about it. And there's... Yeah, like parents, for instance. Like parents are like, I don't want my daughter competing against a dude. Mm -hmm. Um, um, Even people like Joe Rogan, for instance. He's a um, MMA commenter. Mm -hmm. Um, He's like, don't do this to these women. I, I know these women. Do not subject them to this type of violence. Because again, ultimately, and and this is where I think we don't give men enough credit. Men are saying that y'all are going to get hurt if you just let live and let live. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't it doesn't directly affect men outside of, oh, I hollered at a girl that I thought was a girl, but it wasn't really a girl. But like on the sports field, it's y'all who are going to be affected. So I think the conversation starts with y'all. I think the conversation starts with people who are involved. In that involved. world, yeah, in that world, I think they need to be talking about it. And okay, so hypothetically, they say, okay, we want to still play against women, and the women say, we don't want to play against women who used to be men. What happens? What's the tiebreaker? I don't know. They're gonna have to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna have to sit in that conference room and talk and figure out what is the meet in the middle. 
Again, that's not my space. That's not my area of expertise. I know nothing about sports. Yeah. And regardless of if I'm a woman, I'm not playing a sport. And I'm not playing a sport against a transgender person. So I can't give my opinion. They need to do this, man. I don't know. I think it's going to take those people in those spaces to sit down and have conversations and figure out if there is problems, if there is controversy, if there's people who have issues with it. Those people need to come and they need to talk. And they need to work it out. Those people in those spaces. Well, I, I strongly believe in community. So even if I'm not directly in the space, it's, mm -hmm. it affects me some type of way. For instance, children and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think everybody needs to talk more, honestly. You know, and that, that's part of the goal of this, um, encouraging people to talk.